Every time I begin researching a topic for the next video, I stumble across more topics to cover when it comes to Japan. I don't know what it is about these stories in particular that are always so fascinating. Is it the difference in culture and in which these crimes are committed? Is it the lack of real punishment provided by Japanese law enforcement? Or the realization that some of our favorite places in the world also hold some dark secrets? Either way, I'm so glad I get to uncover more and more of these stories and share them with all of you as it lends me more understanding into the horrible crimes that are committed, but quite frankly, it gives me something to do. So I just want to say thank you for allowing me to do this, and taking an interest in what I do on this channel. I plan to cover more crimes and other interesting things that take place in other parts of the world as well, so if there's a case you would like me to cover and learn about, please put it in the comments. Today we are going to be taking a look at the case of Kaede Ariyama, a seven-year-old girl who was attacked by a Japanese newspaper delivery man named Kaoru Kobayashi Born on November 30th, 1968 in Osaka had anything but a normal life. Working as a paperboy since childhood he would go out every day and try to make money for his family as the household was not a very wealthy one. Ten years after his birth his mother had sadly passed away and in 1989 Kaoru was convicted of sexually assaulting eight children. He received a sentence of two years. Almost immediately after being released, he then attempted to murder a five-year-old girl, in which was sentenced to three years in prison, but was paroled in 1995. He was officially released on July 23, 1996. He began working at a local newsstand in Tomio, known as Asahi Shimbun, but had only been employed for a couple of months before getting hired as a newspaper delivery man for Mainichi Shimbun. This was his final job, officially ending in 2005. It's clear to see just from this beginning that he was troubled for some reason at a very early age, and that was not going to stop anytime soon.奈良市の小学1年生だったアリヤマカエデちゃんは18年前の今日下校途中に新聞配達員の男に誘拐され殺害されました。カエデちゃんが通っていた小学校では命の尊さを考える集会が行われました。18年間。あなた方々を亡く
and redressed her after the crime was committed. This led to the discovery of Kaoru sexually assaulting her as well, but from what I could find, it does not state whether she was alive when the assault happened. On December 14th, 2004, he had sent an email to Ariyama's mother from her phone again, stating, I'll take her baby sister next. On December 30th, 2004, Kobayashi was arrested for kidnapping after cell phone towers noticed he had sent a picture of Kaede from her phone to his own. Kobayashi had been working on his delivery route. Unbeknownst to him, the papers he was delivering had articles stating that the suspect would be arrested soon, so a little bit of foreshadowing was done to himself there. When police searched his room, they discovered not only Ariyama's phone and Randosuru, a video and magazine containing CP, and a large amount of girls' underwear. It's believed these underwear were stolen between June and December of the same year. Also, as a side note, Erandosaru is essentially a child's backpack stitched with leather or leather-like material and is traditionally given once they begin their first year of school and is used until like grade six. They're honestly kind of cute. I might buy one, to be honest. A witness reported they had seen Ariyama walking to Kobayashi's car and believed the two were associated in some way. Kobayashi later stated, I would have kidnapped anyone. A month later, Kobayashi was prosecuted for kidnapping. Due to his previous crimes of sexual assault towards young girls, the public turned to passing a law in Japan similar to Murphy's Law here in the US. This essentially makes it a law for registered sex offenders to have their information be public for everyone to see so communities are aware when one moves into their neighborhood or surrounding area. After Ariyama's murder, the public began having increased hostility towards the otaku community due to the similar crimes of Tsutomu Miyazaki, or the otaku killer. Since the crimes committed by Kobayashi were also related to young girls, much like Miyazaki, he was seen as an extension of the murders that were committed. Kaoru was not an otaku, but after these two crimes, police had their sights on actual members of that community for sex crimes due to the amount of crimes being committed by other people within the otaku community. Nobuto Hosaka, a social democrat republican, denounced the hostility and uproar towards the Figure Moezoku and saw no connection whatsoever. Kobayashi's trial began on April 18th, 2005. Most notably from the trial, he stated, I want to be sentenced to death as quickly as possible and have a legacy among the public as the next Tsutomo Miyazaki or Mamoru Takuma. Both of these men were child murderers with histories of mental illness and sex crimes against children. Miyazaki responded later to this by saying, I won't allow him to call himself the second Tsutomo Miyazaki when he hasn't even undergone a psychiatric examination. I plan to cover this topic as well as Mamoru in a later video, although I'm sure a lot of you know who they are by now, but they're both very interesting cases as well. Kobayashi was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder and pedophilia, but was also deemed sane enough to be held responsible for what was done. Although Ariyama's identity was withheld by Japanese media, the family later released her name and picture in September 2006. Kaoru was sentenced to death by hanging on February 21st, 2013, where he passed away in the Osaka Detention House. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be covering the other two men in later videos. There's so many things I want to cover, and this was one I had to do for a video. Based on the information and connections made to certain crimes, it almost feels like I have to report them in a certain way or a certain order for you to get the full picture. 
At least this time, justice was served to someone. As it is with a few people I'll be talking about in the future, but it seems like that's very far and few between. I appreciate you all for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe, we're almost to 700, and I'm trying to think of some video ideas for when we reach a thousand subs. If you have any ideas, leave a comment. I never thought I'd even be where I am now, so thank you all so much for your kindness, and thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next one.